Hey, are you ready to learn some valuable insights and wisdom that'll help you on your entrepreneurial journey? Well, you're in luck because I just finished reading the amazing book, How to Start a Startup, by Tarun Agarwal, which is based on a Stanford University course taught by Y Combinator. This book is like a treasure trove of practical advice and tips for anyone looking to start their own company. It covers everything from pitching for funding to hiring employees and everything in between. Trust me, if you're serious about starting a business, you need to read this book. But don't just take my word for it. Check out the video where I share all the juicy details and insights I gained from delving into this powerful guide. Trust me, it's packed with actionable advice that'll help you on your path to solid, sustainable growth. So, grab a notebook and pen, and let's get started on making your startup dream a reality. Introduction. Are you ready to turn your brilliant idea into a successful business? Startups are popping up everywhere you look, but just because they're ubiquitous doesn't mean they're easy to create, am I right? Especially if you don't have the guidance and knowledge you need to get started on the right foot. But don't worry, because that's where these videos come in. First things first, you need passion, a great idea, and a great product. Check, check, and check. Great. But what's next? These videos will show you the way. They're like your own personal guide on how to launch a startup and they'll provide you with valuable advice on everything from product development to hiring and managing employees. In these videos, you'll learn 1. What a former executive at LinkedIn and PayPal has to say about delegating work. 2. How to present your startup to others without confusing them. 3. Why the homepage for the startup Wafu makes dinosaur sounds. Idea number one. Are you ready to build a solid foundation for your business that'll help it achieve sustainable growth? Well, then you better listen up because I've got some valuable insights for you. Do you remember building houses of cards as a kid? Remember how they needed a strong base and consistent design to stay standing? Well, Starting a business is kind of like that, except instead of cards, you're building with people. And that's why working with multiple founders is key to creating a sustainable startup. Think about it. If you have two or three founders, you have multiple skill sets built into your foundation. For example, one founder may be a strong business developer, but they'll need a co-founder with great people skills, and maybe another with more technical knowledge. This way, you have a well-rounded foundation that can compensate for each other's weaknesses. Another crucial aspect in creating a sustainable startup is simplifying and delegating. Simplifying processes can increase overall performance by 30 to 50 percent, as former LinkedIn and PayPal executive Keith Rabois advises. Instead of trying to pursue a long list of growth initiatives at once, Distill that list down to three items or less. This will help everyone understand what is important and allocate their time accordingly. Delegating is also important but don't micromanage your team. It only slows processes and makes them disgruntled. Let them take the initiative and get their creative juices flowing. And if you really want them to start innovating, you'll need to get out of their way. So... Keep these insights in mind and start building a strong foundation for your startup today. Idea number two. All right, startup enthusiasts. You've got your solid foundations with great founders, simplification and delegation. But what's next? You guessed it, team members. But not just any team members. You need the right people on your team to achieve sustainable growth. In the beginning, it's best to do as much as you can yourself to save every penny to create your product and market it to customers. As your business grows, you'll need a few extra hands to get things done and by then, you'll be able to afford it too. But because your startup is still likely to be quite small, it won't make sense to go out and hire an entire team and a bunch of interns. Just look at Airbnb. They only hired a total of two new employees in their first year of existence. When you're ready to hire, 
look for someone who can handle a wide variety of tasks, just like early stage founders handle duties across several fields. And most importantly, seek out employees who are passionate about your business. This is something that Airbnb took very seriously when hiring. Their CEO Brian Chesky actually asked interviewees if they would still work for Airbnb if they had one year to live. Those who said they wouldn't were not advanced in the hiring process. Unfortunately, not all hiring processes are foolproof. Sometimes new team members who shine in interviews lose their enthusiasm after the first few weeks. If things just aren't working out, you have to let them go. In these early stages of a startup, you simply can't afford to have people on your team who aren't committed. Once you've found great employees, their happiness should be a top priority. After all, you want them to stick around. Give them credit for what they achieve and help them make their work feel like less of a job and more of a calling. Happy employees equal a happy startup and sustainable growth. Idea number three. Are you getting ready to make a big impression? Whether it's at a job interview, a date, or meeting new people. Well, the same goes for making a great first impression with your customers. Just like how we all want to look our best when meeting new people, it's important to make sure our first interactions with customers are positive and memorable. From emails to billboards, it's crucial that each customer's first experience with your company is a good one. And here's a pro tip. Sometimes it's the little things that make a big impact. Take online survey service Wafu, for example. They greet customers with a cute cartoon dinosaur that makes people smile and remember their company fondly. But, let's face it, not every company can charm customers with a cartoon dinosaur. Different demographics have different needs and values, and so do individuals within those demographics. And for startups, it can be a real challenge to cater to each customer's individual needs. That's why Wafu's software development team spent 30% of their working week interacting with customers who were having problems. It may seem like a lot of effort, but it allowed the developers to understand their customers' needs and respond to them when designing the overall service. So, go forth and make a great first impression with your customers. It's worth the effort in the long run. Idea number four. You know how fishing is all about waiting for the fish to bite? Well, fishing for customers is a whole different ball game. If we want customers to bite, we gotta go out there and actively seek them out. Now, most startups know who their ideal customers are, but do they know where to find them? The key is building relationships, even on a personal level. And you know what's a great way to do that? Conferences. But here's the catch, no pun intended, you gotta choose the right conference to attend. It should be relevant to your business, so if you're a fintech startup, head on over to fintech conferences where you'll meet people who are interested in your business. And it's best to go for smaller conferences, that way you'll have more chances of making small talk and engaging with potential customers personally. And here's another tip, don't just talk about your product's features, Listen to your customers. When we listen to people, we show them that we care and understand their needs. It's a small thing, but it goes a long way in building trust and making them more likely to buy your product. But, what if they're not interested after your first attempts? Don't worry. That's what follow-ups are for. People get caught up in their daily routine. Sometimes all it takes is a little reminder. By frequently following up with a potential customer, you're showing them that you're reliable and eager to help. So don't be shy. It's perfectly fine to make regular and continuous attempts to follow up until they show a clear sign of interest or disinterest. Now, you're ready to go fishing for customers and reel them in. Happy fishing! Idea number 5. Hey there! I know we all want to get our startups up and running with minimal investment, but let's be real, at some point we'll all need a little help from investors. And you know what they say, it's better to have them on your side before your rivals do. So, how do we charm these investors into investing in our startup? Well, 
First things first. Investors are always on the lookout for companies with real products that customers love and that are making money. This shows that your startup is sustainable and there's market interest in your product. It's less risky and more appealing to them. And once you got them interested, it's time to present them with the perfect pitch. And a perfect pitch includes three things, your product, the market size, and your growth rate. Make it simple and clear. Imagine you're explaining it to your grandma. Like Airbnb, we let people rent out extra rooms in their houses. Next, tell them about the size of your target market and the opportunities to reach interested customers. It'll give them an idea of the returns on their investment. And lastly, show them how fast you're growing with key statistics. Like, we started in February and now we're growing at a rate of 35% each month. Our sales total is $10,000 and we have 6,000 users and counting. Make sure to have all your ducks in a row and you'll be sure to reel in those investors. Happy pitching. Summary. Building a startup isn't easy, but by taking the right steps from the beginning, whether it's in your marketing, hiring process, or even your founding team, you can set your startup on the path to success. Here's a quick tip for you. Check your user activity and follow the curve. Next time you're wondering why and how your product needs to develop, start tracking your user activity. Calculate the percentage of users that are active at least once a month, draw a retention curve based on when they signed up for your service, and update it monthly with your data. If you see an asymptotic curve, you're on the right track and can start making the most of growth tactics. But if the curve keeps plummeting without flattening out, it's time to work on getting a product market fit. It's like fishing. You gotta keep an eye on the fish's behavior to know when to reel them in. So, don't be afraid to check your user activity and follow the curve. It's a small step, but it can lead to big improvements in your startup success. Happy building. Now, that was only a small portion of what I learned. I highly recommend reading it for more insights. If you enjoyed it, I would really appreciate it if you could take a moment to hit the subscribe button, like this video, and share it with your friends and followers. Your support helps me to grow my channel and reach a wider audience, and I am so grateful for it. Don't forget to hit the notification bell to stay up to date on my latest videos. Thanks again for watching, and I can't wait to share more with you in the future.